and down under. The ambitious goal to compete against the five other American teams and the rest of the world to wrest the America's Cup from the Australians and bring it back to the heart of America. All odds were against the team even making it to the first mark. This story follows Heart of America on their bold race to Perth. I christen thee Heart of America. God bless her and all who sail upon her. As Australia 2 crossed the finish line 51 seconds ahead of Dennis Connor in the American Defender Liberty in 1983, the drive to recapture the cup for the United States began. Some very dedicated and determined men and women decided to not only return the cup to the United States, but to, of all places, the Midwest, the heart of America. The skipper of the heart of America, Buddy Malgus. Coming up, what a thrilling day it is for me. The heart of America is really coming out today to show the rest of the world that we do sail well on our lakes. But we're going down to Australia with this magnificent piece of equipment. Perhaps it was audacious enough that a bunch of lake sailors wanted to challenge for the cup at all. What was even more outrageous was that before the Chicago team could even think of hoisting sails and challenging the world, they had to go before the New York Supreme Court and prove that Lake Michigan is an arm of the sea. We have had to overcome every obstacle imaginable to get Buddy and that crew and that boat to Australia. First, we had to prove that the lake was a place where they could have an international sailing event. And now what you read in almost every publication is most people will say that the lake is probably going to be some of the toughest sailing in the world. And in the beginning, it was, well, it's some little Midwestern pond. And then all of a sudden, people start understanding that, yeah, the Lake Michigan happens to be very tough sailing country. There may be hundreds of miles between Chicago and the smell of salty sea air, but the New York Supreme Court ruled that Lake Michigan was, in fact, an arm of the sea. And so now we have, you can call it Lake Michigan, the Bay of Michigan, or the Gulf of Michigan. But we have an arm of the sea. What are you, what are you doing? Hey, this is uh, the real McCoys. This is the new salinity of Lake Michigan. And it wouldn't be right unless we put some on the old girl right now. Hey, there's that. With the first of many obstacles cleared, Buddy Melkus, the wizard of Zenda, accepted the challenge to bring the cup up. A man to lead and teach, to fire the imagination, and convince backers and crew that Heart of America was real. It's not about a bunch of sailors on Sundays. It's about this city, and it's about what happens every three years if we can have a major international event out here on the lakefront. The prospect of the cup residing on the shores of Lake Michigan stirs feelings of patriotism and regional pride. But the potential boost in tourism and travel-related income to the host site is staggering. We are the people who took the America's Cup away from the New York Yacht Club and gave Chicago a chance to win it. <laughs> uh, we propose to keep the America's Cup right where it is down in uh, Perth, Australia. We propose to keep it there for very good reasons. We can't afford to lose it. Uh, we can't afford to lose it because if you've already seen uh, 11,000 new jobs. Australia has realized over $1 billion in gross revenues to date, with more to follow. So an estimate of a $1 billion influx to the Chicago area would be conservative and welcome. And when someone says, where are you going for your holidays, say Australia. Oh, and if they say, where's that, tell them. Tell them it's where the America's Cup is.
last boat built by a group of guys in Chicago and go down and truly be competitive. I wouldn't be giving up a year and a half of my life uh, to go over there and not win it. I think everyone else believes that in the group, too, that we're very firm believers in Buddy, firm believers in, in what this group is trying to accomplish in the direction that we're, we're going. King Kenny and, and his son came up to see me, I think it was right after 83, when Dennis uh, lost the cup to the Australians, and said to me, Buddy, would you get involved with the uh, uh, Chicago Yacht Club Challenge for the America's Cup? And I said, it sounds like a good idea. I'll help you where I can. And he said, well, we'd like you to drive the boat. And I said, I think I'd like that, too. I'm looking for another challenge. And, and uh, as I've said often, my friend Tom Blackaller says, no, just don't sail anything less than the length of your age. And I think we're getting up there, there so we can think about 12 meters. I started to try to get Buddy Melgis involved in the America's comp uh, Cup competition, first in 1973, and then successively every time thereafter. So. Uh, this, for me, is a uh, singular personal uh, occasion to see Buddy Melgis and his boat here in Chicago in the Midwest and preparing to ship it to the West Coast and on to Australia for the competition. Driving the boat this time around was, was a simple choice. Uh, we're going down there to win the cup and not defend the cup. Uh, we're in an entirely different light in that respect. And when we win the cup, we can bring it to the heart of America. The America's Cup would not be the first sailing honor Melgus has brought to the Midwest. He is a gold and bronze Olympic medalist and a gold Pan American Games winner. As his trophy room shows, these are only a few of Buddy's sailing achievements over a lifetime. Just his, his experience over the last 30 years racing, he's raced every kind of boat in every kind of condition, so uh, I think he's, his natural ability is there, and uh, uh, we sure, sure have a hard time beating him. Buddy's probably one of the best sailors in the world is a, really a legend in his own time. David, I'd like you to, to uh, shoot the jib a little firmer on my slow bow downs and then ease it again. Okay? okay? It'll help to pull my bow around and then you can go right back into the camera. 30 years of sailing has given Buddy a distinct style and technique. So even though Heart of America will have all state-of-the-art computers and instrumentation standard on today's 12 meters, it will have something more, a drink water sailor with an uncanny ability to read the wind, feel the boat and seas, and rely on the seat of his pants for judgments no computer can make. See the pants sailing has a tendency to, to extend your thinking beyond the boat. Instrumentation has a tendency to bring your thinking back into the boat. And if you can't plan, like in chess, your next three moves, and you're going to be a reactor rather than an actor out there on a race course, I think you're going to get in trouble. You know, he doesn't just go out there and sail. I mean, he's looking at instruments and everything, but he's trying to get everyone's head out of the boat, on the horizon, checking things out, looking at wind shifts, looking at waves, and getting everyone into the game. Right on up, right on up. Buddy's reputation comes from sailing small boats, primarily on lakes. This is his first voyage in a 12-meter. Okay, easy, Jim. To a certain degree, a boat's just a boat. And it doesn't matter, you know, what size it is. A boat, you know, if you're a good sailor, you're a good sailor. And you see it over and over again. The little boat sailors come out into the big boats, and they kill all the big boat sailors because the small boat sailors are just better sailors. And I don't care if you're out in the open sea or, or on a small lake. It's all the same. Yeah, I know it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature, but on the other hand, what you're trying to do is outwit her all the time. And, and uh, if I'm conscious or more conscious of the things around me, I think that'll help me do that. And if I can bring my crew to be that conscious, uh, we'll be better crew because of it. Skippering for the heart of America may be the sailing challenge of a lifetime for the wizard of Zenda. My challenge is, is dueling myself against Mother Nature, the sea, the wind, and the clouds, and being able to, to you know, make use of that and put my boat where it has to be in order to take full advantage of what she's uh, giving up for us in, in our battle to win that race. We're on the wind, Dana. We're on the wind. Thank you. But the skipper's hat is not the only hat Buddy wears for this venture. Well, you say that, uh, we, we marked a foot here now. We're ready okay. to cut. Yeah. We'll leave the line. Uh, Harry, you better arrange for a pullout tonight. The bottom is still dirty on the port side. I think we need to get it out of the water to do a thorough job for tomorrow, basically. Boom. That's
That's what's, what's forcing the hump in front of the bat. If you opened your leech up, everything would flow right in and disappear. But this isn't going to be fat. It's merging the two syndicates, uh, all of a sudden... They... He's also kept busy with fundraising and media appearances. We need your support. And we need the support of the Chicago Yacht Club. And we need the support of the Heart of America. A great addition to our team. Then we're going to have those eight people in front of us. Take six. Many believe that the Aussies' wing keel was a reason for their success in 83, but it was their technology as well. Heart of America will have this technology plus more and will bring the cup up in 87. Right now, America's oldest sporting trophy, the America's Cup, is down under in Australia. I'm Buddy Malgus and I race sailboats. I believe we can bring the America's Cup up to the heart of America and we will bring the cup up to the heart of America. Sounds like you believe that. <laughs> I've said it enough, I ought to. Buddy said when we were in hundreds of times until Eleven crew members are needed to race a modern 12-meter boat. Take her away! Each member must understand the relationship between brute force and finesse that characterizes the very best 12-meter sailors. I had been sailing for almost a year with the Courageous Group, as a number of the crew members had been, and uh, it was kind of not happy with the situation there with Courageous and didn't feel real strongly about the chances of the program to win. And the Heart of America got underway and I called Buddy wondering if he'd be interested in having me try out and he expressed an interest and I showed up a couple weeks later in Chicago and started sailing with them. When they asked me to try out it was, it was perfect because they were just starting off and I was just starting off in 12 meter sailing, so it seemed like, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. No one's position is assured. Buddy will be judge and jury. He's a man strong enough, smart enough, and enough of a team player. Can he handle 14 hour days working out, sailing, maintaining the boat, and still keep the competitive desire that is more important than any mechanic?
team meals and, and, and just the whole team concept. It stops dead at the, at the ramp. Let it down, let it down a little bit and try to go again. With all the articles that you read about the gin sippers and the blue blazers at the Yacht Club are not true in 12-meter sailing. I've learned that, that you you're get up at 6.30, 6.15 every morning, that you work out in the morning, you sail for eight hours a day, then you come in and you either work out at night or you go home and, and crash. It, it, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of times you end up, you're so down and out and you're so beat that you just keep on going and you put a little bit of extra effort into it because you know that this guy's backing you up and that he's going to help you out no matter what happens. He gets a lot out of the people who work under him uh, and he gets it out of them in a way that they, they're really enjoying it. They really en are enjoying what they're doing and uh, they're really putting up for him. Because the Challenger Series in Perth is a grueling schedule of some 50 races of up to five hours each in a three-round robin series, this crew, the heart of the heart of America, must be in top physical condition. Come on, Andy, get in. A typical day begins at 6.30 with strenuous workouts. They then prepare the boat for the day. The heart of America must rely on every member of the team to handle dock and maintenance okay. work. Okay, the rudder's real easy, too, because you can just grab onto that. Last time, it was about the same tide as this, and I had about this much water underneath the keel. Okay. So it's really tough. you got to use your arm, because you can't fit underneath it. Tell me about it being comfortable up here. Well, it's, I find it pretty comfortable after you get used to it. I just get away by myself and... Uh, Spent half an hour checking everything over, making sure that it's ready to go and that uh, no cracks are developing or uh, some of the rigging fatiguing or anything like that. Other syndicates may be able to leave this work to paid professionals. Part of America does not have that luxury, but financial constraints have led to a newfound confidence. It's a financial necessity to have the crew members work on the boat, but it's also a, a uh, necessity in if we have a breakdown out in the course, I want everyone on that boat to know exactly how this is led or that uh, fitting is secured and they can make a jury rig and we don't lose. The first true test of skipper, crew, and boat came in the fall of 1985. The team needs serious competition. Heart of America and the Canadian syndicate, Canada 2, meet to race in the icy waters of Victoria, British Columbia. On the eve of the Maple Leaf Cup race, the team celebrates Thanksgiving dinner far away from home. We're thrilled with your guidance. Let us start first, increase our lead, and bring the cup up. See, the, the ocean currents keep Victoria very warm, so it's a perfect place to sail in the winter. I don't know where all this white sand came from, though. It must have blew in off the beach last night. We have all sorts of delays in 12-meter sailing regarding your dock start. You know, it's, a, it's always a challenge to get your boat off the dock at the designated hour. But I never thought that it would be a foot and a half of snow that would cause the delay. The dock start is at 
I believe that you'll experience a windward lured windward. The sails on the boat will be the two, three, four, five. The need of today's tactics are to, to get on top early and contain uh, Canada One. I want alertness. I want the heads out of the bilge. I want you to anticipate the calls, but don't uh, jump your head out in front where you might misjudge it. OK? How you doing? Good morning. That boat right there. Yeah. Heart of America loses the first of the five races that make up the Maple Leaf Cup, but they don't lose their enthusiasm. Because what happens is that the pole goes to the head. Yeah, yeah, and then they grind the pole. Then they grind the uh, the pole back, and then it brings the chute. It tightens the foot, and then then the pole goes right through. It. I don't think we turn the boat or move the boat as fast as right. The, the, the shoot, shoot stall. Just that <clears throat> right. Usually we would beat the shoot. <clears throat> Well, I saw that it was a perfect mate. I always watch Billy I, or who's ever on the foredeck. I watch his hands. And when I see that the shoot, if he hollers mate, I watch the pole. If I know the pole is going out, I bring it up accordingly. If I know the pole is, is not coming out, I square up harder. And the reason I do that is that uh, if I stay square and, you, and you're fooling around, you're hiding the chute behind the main, doesn't make any sense. So you got to square up more. Clear it out, and then we'll back down again. Any questions for today? Hey, Eric, uh, this this uh, temperature out there is pretty too Okay. Who wants to be in Jack's pit this morning? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> okay, I'll assign somebody. Put you you're in Jack's pit. Jack, you can stay in. Okay? Sure. Are you connecting the sheet to the guy or the guy is the sheet? Watch the ice ball up the sheet. <laughs> Miserable weather and the relative slowness of trial horse clipper combine to work against the team. The Midwest loses three out of five races and the series. But the ice, snow, and competition has tempered this group. The winner of the Maple Leaf Cup, Canada won. I think Buddy and his crew didn't sail that much worse than we did. It's with the boats that made the real difference. Canada One is a fast boat. We've been telling you that for, well, 10 days now, I believe. Do you believe it? But it's been a lot of fun for the crew of Clipper to be able to enjoy the camaraderie of the Canadian hosts. Now it is clear, Clipper will not be competitive in Perth. A new boat worthy of the challenge must be built. I don't think any yacht designer in the world can possibly turn down the opportunity to try to design the boat, the 12 meter that brings the America's Cup back to America. Scott Graham and Eric Schlageter from the Chicago firm Graham and Schlageter. Jim Gretzky, founder of Obscure Boats, and Duncan McLean of Horton and McLean were selected to design Heart of America. It isn't necessarily always the case that the fastest boat wins, but it's usually the case that the fastest boat has the best chance of winning. We want to give our crew, our skipper, 
best possible platform to exhibit their skills as sailboat racers on. We know that if we get a boat that is a big improvement over what's gone before, it's going to be a couple of seconds a mile faster. The margin of victory in these races is frequently less than a second a mile. It takes a lot of effort to get a noticeable improvement in, in yacht design. We rely on the guys who are sailing the boat to hold up those kind of those kinds of improvements because one bad tack can easily burn 25 seconds and at a second a mile that's almost a whole America's Cup race. So there's a lot riding on people besides the designers. If we give them a slow boat, they're going to have a hell of a time winning America's Cup. The reason we built one boat was because when this whole effort was put together, uh, as much trouble as we've had raising money saying we only needed seven million dollars to do this, uh, it would have been an, probably an impossible task in the Midwest saying we needed 20 million dollars because we were going to build a, a, a series of boats so we could get all this design experience and everything else. Um, so from that point of view, the, the whole effort was put together understanding that it would be a very, very lean budgetary sort of issue and that immediately drove you to a conclusion that you could only afford to build one boat. Others would spend millions in building three or four boats in preparation for Perth. Everything that we end up designing or drawing into this boat is going to have to work the first time out of the box because we will not have the time to go back and re-engineer or redesign very many components of this particular yacht. The computer would allow us to do a parent hull form in probably six to eight hours. And from that parent hull form, we could then systematically vary length, vary displacement, vary beam if we wanted to. And we can systematically take a part of the boat on the computer screen and play with it. Change the back end, change the front end, change the middle, maybe change combinations of all of those. In 1983, Australia shocked the racing establishment with its radical winged keel design, which helped stabilize the boat and allow for tighter maneuvers. That act opened up the field of boat design. Imagination now reigns. We're looking at winged keels and a number of other interesting variations on keel design, variations from what had been considered the norm, and we will use whatever we think is fastest. If it's got wings, then we'll use wings. The main consideration in the design would be the volatile weather and sea conditions in Perth. The designers had to keep in mind that the boat would race in light air in the beginning months of the series and then skillfully manage near gale conditions later in the finals. If we try to start out with a boat that's perfect for February, we'll never make it to February because we'll be eliminated in November. So we've got to go in there with a boat that we can change over time and we will do that. 22-foot scale models were built from selected designs. Tank testing consultant Pierre Desay would run a complete series of performance tests at the David Taylor Naval Research Center, the most prestigious tank facility in the world. I really believe that uh, the only way you're going to develop hulls, prove them out, the best tool we have today, yet, still, is the tank. And we're here with... Uh actually four models of, of boats and some different appendages, keels and rudders to test and we pull them down this long swimming pool and see how they go. And one of the reasons that Australia 2 won America's Cup seems to be that they put a higher level of effort into the design of the boat using a large scale test tank to a much greater extent than had ever been done before. That's why we lost the cup. <laughs> and I'm glad we lost it, we're back in the tank. <laughs> and the nice thing about testing with the models is that you remove a lot of variables. When you're testing full-size boats, one against another, you have the variables of the helmsman, the crew, the sails, wind shifts, waves. When you're testing in the tank, all those variables disappear and you're really just measuring one hull against another. Construction began on the new boat in January of 1986. The construction firm of Merrifield Roberts was commissioned to build the Heart of America, with the designers on call to help resolve problems. Building any boat is a difficult task, but the exacting measurement requirements, length and weight of a 12-meter compound the job's difficulty. It will take approximately 50 frames 
30 supports, two to 300 gussets, and 400 aluminum plates to build this boat. Each plate must fit perfectly when welded together. The aluminum hull will take 110 days to complete. A 12 meter boat is not 12 meters long. In fact, nothing on the boat is. The 12 meter name refers to the complex formula to which the boat is designed. Waterline length, sail area, girth, and freeboard govern the formula that keeps the boats equally competitive. When US-51 rolled out of the construction shed, she measured within a quarter inch of her designed length. Her weight, a hefty 65,000 pounds. The 67-foot yacht's winged keel is standard issue for 12 meters in this new era, although her wings can be changed if it proves necessary. Her unusual bustle and sleek lines mean less wake and therefore more speed. Heart of America heads for Narragansett Bay. This eagerly awaited series of shakedown sails begins. The computer design results and the tank are left on shore. It's time to see if the boat is fast and maneuverable. Steve, you can tell the people on the boat, on your power boat, that this thing is steering like a dream. A lovely thing. Boy, is this ever nice. The fine-tuning process to optimize the performance begins. The team will have to find the perfect locations for mast, ballast, and rigging, and learn how she handles during a race. It took more than designing and building a boat to get to Perth. It took dollars, lots of them. The Heart of America is doing it on a $7 million budget, one of the smallest of all syndicates. A new mast fully rigged is over $70,000. Uh, you get into exotic materials like carbon fiber for uh, booms and spinnaker poles, and carbon fiber boom costs $25,000. So much of the hardware on the boat is custom, uh, you can't even put a price tag on it because somebody has to make it. We may not have uh, 100,000 sails, but uh, we're going to have enough sails to go sailing. You only need two at a time to race around an America's Cup course. Where other syndicates maybe only use a sail for 20 hours and they use it over a period of a month, uh, we use ours every single day uh, for a period of a month, and we get to know that sail very well. But since we're using it every day, six or seven hours a day, the sail may only last a month and a half. I don't think that it's... Uh, the wearing out is not as bad of a problem because we've had to overbuild our sails because we knew they were going to have to last longer than everybody else's. Half of the budget goes to the boat. The rest for crew training, travel, administration, and the likes. My job is to coordinate with the project manager and Buddy all of the information and communications between the crew, the boat, and the office. Housing, food, flight schedules so that everything does move smoothly, and we also have to keep track of costs. Since this is an amateur event, the crew members are not paid for their effort in the challenge. MCI kicked off the fundraising effort with a million-dollar corporate contribution. Other major corporate contributors were slow in following. The kinds of numbers we've asked big business to, uh, to help us with in, in terms of the effort are numbers that most of them round off at the end of the year. That's been an effort that we've had to overcome. And now we're down to a point where we thought it was gonna cost us seven million. We now think we can get by on around six million and we've raised almost four and a half. So we're only about a million and a half dollars short of our goal to completely fund the effort and keep Buddy and the crew in Australia through February and, and the finals. But small companies and thousands of individuals help take up some of the slack with smaller contributions and purchases of Heart of America memorabilia. Those willing to contribute $500 or more have their name inscribed on the transom of the boat. Still, there is a shortfall. We don't have a limited dollars, unlimited dollars. I'm putting my name on most of these purchase orders, so I don't want to go around and leave all my friends hanging dry with, with the Heart of America challenge. So 
uh, that's a concern. What I've had to give up is really a, a, a financial responsibility to my companies in Zenda. And, and uh, uh, there's been times when I've really looked in the mirror and said, can I go on? And uh, each time I've come down to a real crisis uh, about those decisions, we, we seem to have gotten a little bit stronger. Some of this is caused by the good work of, of uh, Hunts and, and Harry Malgus running the two companies that are our sole support. Uh, Gloria's, uh, through all our, our married life, has been nothing but in support of anything I've ever done in the, in the yachting way. Playing for these stakes with a short bankroll is dangerous, but Buddy and the team remain committed to the challenge. We have good personnel at every level. The only thing that we need now are the dollars to support this energetic effort. A lot of people are uh, looking at it in the wrong light. They've put it on a pyramid of dollars rather than the sporting event it really is. I feel bad that we don't show off our boats and, and keep it more open because this is the pinnacle of yacht racing, the America's Cup, and it's why we try to run an open camp and, and uh, have the public involved so we get not only their support but their interest. One of the most dramatic illustrations of this open attitude can be found in Heart of America's relationship with Canada too. In preparation for Perth, these two adversaries joined forces in serious competition. They felt the gains were well worth any secrets that might be divulged. Why were the Canadians? Because they're open and we trust them and they trust us. And uh, I think that that in a nutshell is, is worth every gamble that we've taken. And to date, we haven't a uh, problem. We've been cooperating not only in our exchange of ideas, but also freedom in and out of one another's camps for the use of one another's equipment is also of great value. And I think our two programs are very unique that, that we're, I don't know if you're mature enough or just got enough common sense to work together to try and win the America's Cup. I can't believe other syndicates aren't doing what we're doing. We're real lucky that we ran into the, the syndicate because we've learned a lot. I think they've learned a lot from us. Heart of America learns they are competitive, beating Canada in 18 of 23 races held in Santa Cruz. Before they leave for Perth, the Midwest team throws a barbecue for the Canadians. I think that what we have going here is a damn good possibility of bringing the cup back to its rightful place, North America. All right. Now I know that we've been envious from time to time of you Canadians. And when we were intimidated by your hockey stick as a flagstaff, we countered with a manure fork. Sailing for speed. We're debugging a 12 meter, so it's uh, ready to go race in 20 to 35 knots of wind. That uh, we don't have to wear crash helmets. We can go out there with confidence that the rig will stand in place, that the sails will not tear in shreds, and that the crew has got the to put up with the conditions. These final weeks of preparation are the most critical for the challenge. 
Santa Cruz was selected because the sailing conditions here are consistently similar to those in Perth. This gives the team constructive sailing time every day. Every day we can have between 15 and 35 knots of wind. It depends where we go on the Monterey Bay. The further we can head out at uh, uh, 240 degrees from the harbor mouth of Santa Cruz, and if we go three miles, we'll hit 12 knots. And if we go five miles, we'll hit 18 knots. And if we go eight miles, we'll hit 25 to 30. There is an intense pressure on Buddy and the crew during the last few days of training. We are scrutinizing crew that you guys are, are you're under the gun, you're under surveillance at all times, and the performance uh, on and off the boat are critiqued, and we'll be making some decisions as early as the 16th about people that uh, have a chance to, to go all the way to Perth, and those of you that uh, uh, might better spend uh, your time elsewhere for the remainder of the summer that uh, you might be spinning your wheels here. And I'll talk to each individually. Uh, it, it gets a little more stressful when it gets down to the wire like this when, you know, there's only a couple days left till the decision's made. But it's a good pressure, and I think part of the reason it's done this way is to see how the, some of, you know, how each individual does react to the pressure. Um, you know, you gotta just hang tough and, and keep fighting. Well, I'm used to it, because I went to uh, six training camps in the NFL, and every year you're, um, you're tested and they bring new people in and you have to face the competition and uh, earn your job. But by and large, you have to come in and you pack your little suitcase and put it on top of the dresser and hope you don't get a bus ticket back. Home, that is. We're still working real hard as a group. Um, in the next week or so, the cuts will be made. And even then, I don't know if those are the final cuts. We just got to keep working real hard towards the America's Cup and kind of put that in the back of your mind, just giving it 110% as much as you can, as long as you can. We're pushing ourselves harder and harder and harder. And the little things do matter, and they get worked out after a while. But you're still achieving a, a very high standard of sailing. I, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll be ready as a boat and as a team and as a skipper to uh, compete at the top level when we get to Perth. question about that. Some of that struggle has been caused by inexperience on all of our...